This is going to be a video on how to test a generator armature. This will do starter armatures also. Back in the day, the cars had DC generators instead of alternators. This is where all the load was carried. You had field windings that were around a big piece of steel in the generator that generated a magnetic field that this spun through and caused it to generate current. The higher the voltage in the field, the more current this would output. And the brushes carried the load. They were big, heavy units. And because the brushes carried the load, the brushes failed in them. So they went to alternators because it lightened the, the vehicles up a little bit, and every little bit here and there counts. And they had two copper, uh, it's hard to, like, like as if you cut this in half and they were solid all the way around. And two brushes ran side by side. And that was your field winding and your armature was out on the housing of the alternator. So the brushes on an alternator carry low voltage, low current, what the field windings on this would carry in the case. And on the alternator, the heavy current was carried through the windings in the housing. But because they, the way they were designed with the field spinning and the armature static, it developed AC current. And that's why they're called alternators. So they put diodes in them to change the alternating current to direct current. These generated direct current. They did not have diodes. A generator will bring your specific battery, specific acid in your battery up to 1300. An alternator, you might get 1275. The alternator needs a little bit of current to keep it working. Generator doesn't. So your battery life is generally better in these cars with generators, but then the generators don't last as long because the brushes wear out prematurely because they're carrying your full load. This was out of a 30 amp 1960 Chevrolet uh, generator. So we're going to check this armature out with a Silver Beauty Model 440 Growler from the AAA Specialty Company in Chicago, Illinois. This is an old unit. I picked it up in an estate sale and it works fine. I'm able to test out generators. The, this is basically a continuity tester. An ohmmeter or self-powered test light will do the same thing as this. You're checking for shorts between this, these windings, and this. So you don't want that light to light up. So I run it all the way around the armature windings and there's no light. So that means that that is not shorted. This and this are one piece here, so that's why that light's coming on here. That is the same as that. That's part of the shaft part. So to check the armature, use a hacksaw blade, and this is a big electromagnet right here that generates current in this armature, and this will stick to that and be much harder to turn. And these will be energized with uh, current. You can use a voltmeter on them if you want, and check the voltage. You'd put it, you'd put your voltmeter here and here, and there and there, and there and there, and so on and so forth around the generator. But you're only going to get your current readings in this area here. You're not going to get them up here and here. So you got to turn it periodically and check them. And here, the reason why is the magnetic field is not strong enough up here from this to give you current readings up in here. It will give you current readings down in there. If you had this spinning inside a generator, it would be obviously generating current on all these. So to check this, this is basically what it should do if the armature is good. Just like as this bits off right now, just kind of float around and do nothing. When you turn the growler on, it'll energize this electromagnet. And it should, like I say, it should do the same thing if it's got a shorted winding. This will stick or vibrate, and I'll show you. I'll short it with a washer here in a little bit and show you how they do as a shorted winding. So let's turn this on. And I do wear a glove when I turn the armature because those are energized with a little bit of current. And I don't want a shock. I've got shocks in the past using these. You can see this blade just sitting there normally like it was when it was turned off. Rotate the armature full all the way around, no problem. 
Now you can see these windings, oh, I can see them, I don't know if you can, they come out and then they come out and they're over. So I'm gonna short down here and hopefully you'll see there. That's, see how it's stuck? That's what would be, it would do if you had a bad winding in your generator armature. See how it's sticking? That should not be doing that. You take the, the washer off, no problem. And you can see the sparks when I, I don't know if you can maybe do it with a hacksaw blade. Well, that's not conducting enough current, but you can see the sparks with this washer when I was moving it on there that it's generating current right now while this is on. But that is a good armature, 1960 Chevrolet. That'll work in a lot of 12 volt Chevrolet generator, Delco Remy generators. Um, the 59 I have has power steering, so they put a ball bearing on the end. Some of the, you get into the higher end cars and they had a ball bearing on the back of the generator and a ball bearing on the front. You get to the Chevrolets, Pontiacs, they had a oil light bushing in the back and a ball bearing in the front. On the power steering generators, they had a ball bearing in the back. The shafts came out further, had a spline. The power steering pump went over the spline and the back cap of the generator had two holes for the pump to bolt to the back of the generator. This is what would have drove the power steering pump had it had the longer shaft with the spline. This will not work on my 59 with power steering. It won't work on a 58 with power steering. It will work in, will work in six, I, I'm sorry, with power steering. Will work in a 60 with power steering because in 1960 they had a separate belt driven pump. They didn't run them off the back of the generator anymore. And uh, I do have a 59 armature around somewhere. I don't know where it is. But that's how you test the armature for the old Delco or any old DC generator or starter motor. Starter motors are direct current. The armatures are direct current. That's uh, um, how the growler works. This, again, is a Silver Beauty Model 440 growler. I picked it up in a state sale. Very inexpensively. They're hard to find if you need one. It might took me a couple of years of looking before I found one. But it's an easy way to check armatures for your starters or generators. It's not the only way to test them, but it's quick and easy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed my video on the growler and testing a generator armature. That was out of a 1960 Delco Remy 60 Chevrolet generator. Thank you for watching.